Hey there guys, this is Mr. Herbst here, and today our focus is going to be on the factor label method. Now the factor label method is a way to convert units into other units. Now the reason we want to do that is because say, you know, you go to France, you want to know how many euros you get for the dollar. Now at first glance, the factor label method might seem very easy to use. It might seem simple. But the factor label method is something that I still use and most adults that I know still use today. The reason is because it's, a, it's an easy way to make sure that you don't screw up your math. Also, even more importantly, the factor label method is going to be a technique that you are going to use all throughout high school and into college. So strap on in and here we go. Alrighty here guys, for the remainder of this video I'm going to go ahead and remove my face because I want you guys to concentrate on the math that I'm doing rather than uh, what I am doing. So first off, let's say that we're given a conversion problem like this. We want to know how many inches are in two feet. The first thing that we do is we want to identify what we have. What are we given in this problem? What numbers do we have to start with? We have two feet to start with. And what are we trying to do? We are trying to convert feet into inches. We want to know how many inches are in two feet. The next thing that we do is we take what we know and we stick it over here. And we take two feet and we put it over one. It's sort of like a, subtract, uh, like a division problem. We look here and we say we have two feet over one. Two divided by one is two. Two feet divided by one is two feet. Now the next thing we do is we got to realize here guys we are trying to convert feet into inches. So in order to properly do that we are going to do what's called the factor label method. Once again this is an easy way to make sure we don't screw up our math. To do this properly we take our first division problem two feet divided by one and we multiply it by another division problem. How are we going to know what to put on the top and what to put on the bottom? Well here's the first thing that we need to make sure that we know what to do. We take feet, and in order to properly get feet to cancel out, we have to take feet and we have to stick it on the bottom of the next step right here. Mathematically, after you were to multiply these two, if you were to multiply these two equations together, feet would cancel. Now you may be wondering, well, what numbers are we, are we going to stick on the top here, and what numbers are we going to stick on the bottom here? That's where we go to our little conversion chart. If you look at your little conversion chart right there, you will see that there are... 12 inches in one foot, but hopefully you already knew that. Now, we have feet that canceled out, and once again, we want to make sure we know what we're doing. We're trying to convert into inches. So we look at this and we say, well, if we multiply this out, what would we be left with? Well, we would be left with inches, and that's good. So we can go ahead and stop canceling things. We can go ahead and solve this problem out. Let's go ahead and undo our math. If we go ahead and multiply everything along the top, we have 2 times 12, that's 24. And then we go ahead and multiply everything along the bottom, that's 1 times 1, and that will give us 1. Then we go ahead and do this simple division problem, which is 24 divided by 1, and that equals 24. Now, the question is here, guys, 24 of what? Once again here, our unit that we, are, that we discovered that we have at the end is inches. We want to know how many inches are in two feet. In this case, there are 24 inches in two feet. So that's a relatively simple problem. You might have been able to do that in your head. However, here's one that's not so simple. Let's say that we want to know how many meters are in 2.5 miles. So once again here, guys, we identify what we have. In this case, we are given 2.5 miles. So we go ahead and we stick that over here and put it over 1. 2.5 mi, mi stands for miles, and we put that over 1. Next thing we want to do is we want to identify what are we trying to do. We are trying to convert 2.5 miles into meters. So no matter what, we better make sure that our ending unit is meters. The first thing that we do though, guys, is we look at our division problem, and we multiply it by another division problem. Once again, how do we know where to start? Well, you're always going to want to start by making sure that miles cancels out. In order to cancel out miles, you want to put it on the bottom of the next step. So it's going to have to go there. Even before you know what numbers to stick here, just know you're going to have to cancel out miles. 
The next thing we can do here, guys, is we can look at our conversion chart, and we can see on, on the top of our conversion chart, there is 1.609 kilometers in one mile. Now, I know that once we cancel out miles, we're going to be left with kilometers, and that's not what we want. So that's why we use the factor label method, and we keep going. Now we go ahead and do another step. Multiply by another division problem. How do we know what to put on the bottom? Well, once again here, guys, we got to get kilometers to cancel, so it's going to go ahead and go along the bottom right here. Kilometers will cancel, but how do we know what to put here and what to put here? Once again, refer to your conversion chart. There are, in one kilometer, 1,000 meters. So now here, guys, after we convert out, after we eliminate uh, kilometers, we are left with meters. Is that what we want? Yes, it is. We want to know how many meters are in 2.5 kilometers. So we go ahead and we solve out everything along the top. 2.5 times 1.609 times 1,000. I'll give you a second to calculate that in your calculator. You should come up with 4,022 point five and then multiply everything along the bottom one times one times one that should be easy because that simply should be one then we go ahead and we do our simple nice converted problem right here four thousand twenty two divide point five divided by one and that is four thousand twenty two point five and once again here guys we gotta make sure that we get our ending unit correctly our ending unit is meters so we put that right here and that is our final answer there are 4,022.5 meters in two and a half miles. So, catching on yet? Let's try one more. This one is a toughie. We want to know how many inches are in four kilometers. So once again here, guys, we take what we know. We have four kilometers and we stick it over one. Four km and we put it over one. The next thing we want to do is make sure that we know what we're doing. We are trying to convert kilometers into inches. So no matter what, our ending unit better be inches or else you're not going to get this problem correct. Next thing we do is we multiply by another division problem. How do we know what to put along the bottom? Well, once again, kilometers is going to have to go right here. Before we even know what's going to go right here on the top and right here in the bottom, you just go ahead and stick kilometers right there. Now go ahead and look at your conversion chart. You'll always be given a conversion chart. You won't be expected to memorize these numbers, uh, especially when we're converting miles into kilometers. But if you take a look, you'll see that there is 1.609 kilometers in one mile, one MI. So kilometers cancels. But if we stopped right here, we'd be left with miles. Once again here, guys, we want to go into inches. So we keep going. We're going to multiply by another division problem. In order to get miles to cancel, we stick it along the bottom right here. Then we go ahead and look at our conversion chart. Is there anything on that conversion chart that converts miles into anything else? Why, yes, there is. There is one conversion that says there's 5,280 feet in one mile. So miles will cancel out. But here's the problem. We're left with feet. Is that what we want? Not quite. So we got to keep going. Yeah, I told you, this one is going to be a toughie. we got to get feet to cancel, so we put it along the bottom right here. Then we go ahead and look at our conversion chart. There, in one foot, there are 12 inches. Now, feet will cancel out, and if we stopped right here, we'd be left with inches. Is that what we want? Why, yes, it is. Once again, we want to go into inches. Now, multiply everything along the top. If you punch that in your calculator, you will be left with 253,440. And then, if you multiply everything along the bottom, 1 times 1.609 times 1 times 1, you'll be left with 1.609. Then what we do is, after we have this nice and converted into one division problem, we go ahead and solve this out. 253,440 divided by 1.609. If you solve that out, you will be left with 157,513.98, or at least roughly 
6.98. Somewhere close to this number you'll be left with. And once again here, guys, this is not a correct answer yet. you got to make sure that you label your units. Because what is this number without a unit? It's like saying going home to your parents and saying, I just won 25. They're going to look at you like, what? What 25 did you win? Now, after you add inches onto the end, that is a complete number. Alrighty, here, guys. Well, that concludes the factor label method and also the reasons why we use it. Uh, once again, here, guys, you have the power to pause and review this video. So if something was confusing, uh, try and get it by uh, reviewing and rewinding. Uh, anyway, here, guys, this is Mr. Herbst, and I'm signing off. Hopefully that helps. Have a nice day.